Today we're going to talk about XLN Audio's XO plugin. The drum loops and the drum samples that are included in the free 10-day trial. How to export those into WAV file. Then from there we're going to take the WAV file, convert it down to 16-bit, and then we're going to import those 16-bit WAV files into our Roland Hansonic HPD20. Okay, so let's get started here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to XLN's website. If you don't already have this awesome plugin, um, you can go and download the free 10-day trial. XLNAudio.com demos, um, you know, pretty self-explanatory demos and trials right here. It's going to walk you through everything. Um, you just kind of go down through the props, download the online installer, and add the products that you want. Pretty simple. I already own this plugin because um, it's a really cool plugin. And uh, much later, I got the HPD 20 and figured out how to install the drum samples from this onto the drum pad. And I just, I love it all the more now. So, anyway, let's check it out and uh, just, you know, see how to do this. First thing we're going to do, we'll open up XLNXO. Okay, so there's a ton of videos on YouTube already talking about this great plugin, everything it does, all the little intricate parts here. But for right now, we're gonna keep it real basic. By default, it opens up as minimal, steady drive. All of these are your little um, drum samples, like drum instruments, okay? And what we're seeing here, this whole thing that looks like the galaxy, this represents every single little snare, cymbal, kick everything so so you can see they're kind of color coded you know like the kicks are more in the red and as you get into the yellow it's more of the high-end stuff so what happens here is the minimal steady drive that's um you know one of many so we can pick this long list here of all this crazy stuff and uh, we're gonna stick with the default, hit the green check. That's the beat that's happening. And then down here, if you can see where my cursor is, this is basically a variation of different samples. It's still staying with the same beat, but it's choosing different samples within that beat. So this is what it sounds like. Okay, now down here, I'm gonna change the variation. You can see here, it's picking different drum samples, right? So anyway, the point is, pick something you like. I mean, you can pick all of these beats up here and then pick different variations down here until you find something that you love. When you find something that you love, you want to go up here to this little symbol here. Now this basically means export. And it's going to give you the option to render all of these samples as wave. It's also going to give you the full drum loop that we just listened to as wave too, which is cool because then you can drag that over to a USB stick and put that under a drum pad on your HPD 20 or whatever uh, drum pad you're using. Just hit a pad and it'll play the entire loop and then you can play with it or you can just sort of set a BPM, whatever you want to do. So for the purposes of today and keeping it simple, we're basically just going to sit right here where it says render waves. Okay. This is after we've already picked the drum beat and the drum samples that we like. And then there it goes. It just renders all the waves. And then we have raw and we have processed. Okay. So moving on from there, um, there's plenty of other things we can get into in the future if you're interested as far as like importing this into Ableton. Uh, of course, you have you can import it as a beat in MIDI, you know, all kinds of stuff. But right now we're going to stick with uh, just sort of these individual samples over into USB sticks. So I got my little USB stick sticking in here and uh, it's empty, so there's no confusion. So then you can take this entire process kit, click and drag it over onto your stick like this, okay? There it is. 
All right, there's all eight samples. So I took the process, you could do the roll if you wanted, but for the purposes of today, we're just gonna stick with the processed kit. Okay, let's move on to the next part. Okay, so moving on to the next part, we're gonna download Audacity onto our computer. If you don't have it already, this is what it looks like. Audacityteam.org, go over to downloads, pick out your operating system and just follow the prompts. Pretty simple, awesome little open source program that'll help you do lots of great things. Uh, in this case, today, we're going to be using it to convert 24-bit to 16-bit. So close that out. And this is what it's gonna look like when we open it up here. Okay. This is what we'll get. It's gonna give you this little what's new in Audacity. Just say hello. So by default, you had the blue field, all right? We'll open up our USB stick. This is all of our files that we exported from XO. So like I said, these are 24-bit. I'll show you here. You go to Properties, Details, 2116 KBPS. All right, we're going to truncate that down to 16-bit. We have to do that because the HPD 20 will only recognize WAV files in 16-bit, okay? So in addition to that, we also have to get rid of all the metadata. So it's real simple. We're gonna highlight all these files and drag them over to the blue field. There it is. Now, while you still have all of these highlighted, we're gonna delete them because in a short manner, after this is all truncated down to 16-bit, we're gonna be putting them back onto the USB stick. Take the USB stick over to the HBD20. So while we're here, we're just gonna delete them. Now it's all nice and clean, nothing on there, all right? Minimize that. Now this is how we do this. This is how we go from 24-bit down to 16. Gonna go on File, Exports, Export Multiple, and it's encoding the 16-bit, and then we just click Export. Now. Here's the one thing we gotta do. We have to clear all the metadata from each one of these WAV files. If we were to leave this on, the HPD 20 would look at this and not recognize it, and it would cause an error. So for each nine of these tracks, we're going to hit clear and we're gonna hit okay. You can see it's basically just a track title. We wanna get rid of that. So, a little bit tedious. Gotta do it nine times, but small price to pay for something so cool. All right, there it is. So there it did it. It ex, it, or no, sorry, it didn't export it, uh, truncated it down to 16 bit. We'll uh, close this out. We're not gonna save. Then we're gonna go into this PC, go under documents, Audacity, and there they all are, okay? We'll check them out, properties, details, 1411 KBPS, that's 16-bit. So now we just gotta open up our uh, USB stick again. Okay, highlight all these guys and drag them over. There it is. So all we have to do is eject this. You know what, actually, while I'm here, let's just delete this so there's no confusion in the future. We're deleting this out of the Audacity folder. All right, now we'll close it out. Close this guy. And we're just gonna eject it. And then from here, we're gonna take it over to the HPD20, and I'll show you how that's done. Okay, so here we are at the final chapter of this video. We're installing WAV files on the HPD20. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to put the USB stick into the back of the USB slot. That has all of our WAV files that we put on there earlier in this video. Right now I'm on a bank of some uh, XO WAV files that I installed earlier uh, in the week. Okay, so what we gotta do is go over to a empty bank, it'll say user kit. And we're gonna hit menu, go down to user instrument, hit enter, import, 
And then right here, this is all of our WAV files. This is right here, this is reading our USB stick. So you can scroll down through and see all nine WAV files that we have on there. In the event that you uh, didn't get all the metadata off or perhaps uh, it's still at 24 bit, this is where it would tell you it's an unsupported format. In our case, we did everything correctly, so there it is. So for brevity's sake, I'm only going to install one of these WAV files. It's very simple to go through the whole process, but it takes a little bit of time. So what you're gonna do is uh, just follow the steps I take here for each nine WAV files. Okay, so right here, we're gonna just start with X01 kick one, which I always like to put right here. So I'm picking that WAV file, I hit import. It's gonna say execute and you hit execute. That's it. From there, it puts it into HPD 20's uh, memory bank. You can see right here, remaining 69%. That's how much memory we have left on the HPD 20. So I think when I started with this, it had 75% and I have maybe three or four banks of WAV files, you know, different uh, kits or whatever. So it doesn't eat up much memory. You got a lot of space to go. So anyway, at this point, if you wanted to install all of these, you just scroll down to each one, hit import, execute, import, execute, and so on and so on. And then we're gonna exit out. We'll just go back to the main page, all right? We're gonna hit menu. It's gonna to go to instrument by default. You hit enter. And then what we do is we hit this pad, okay? So normally when you hit this pad, it's gonna start you all the way over at the very beginning, okay? This is basically saying, pick which one of these sounds you wanna put on this pad. In this case, our user files are all the way over at the end. So to get there fast, you're gonna hold down the shift button and scroll to the right. And that's gonna skip the banks a lot faster. And then at that top line, when you see it says user, take your finger off of the shift button and then you can scroll through one by one to find the actual WAV file you wanna put on there. So there we go. XO-1 kick, that's it. All you have to do is highlight that and then back out. Um, you don't have to hit enter or anything. So now we have it. Okay, turn up the volume. Now, one thing I like to do with each and every one of these that I install is I like to take that sort of muffle off, okay? On here, Roland calls it mute, which is a little confusing, but I'm gonna show you how to do this. We're gonna hit menu, go over to kit, pad control, and then we'll hit receive, okay? So it would say on by default, and you just wanna switch that over to off, okay? So if I was to hit it on, let me see. If, then you just back it off. Actually, it might not do it for this. Yeah, it's not doing it for the kick, but whenever you do like the high end things that have like sort of a reverb tail or, um, you know, maybe a s snare crack or something, and you want it to ring out as opposed to sort of cutting off that tail, you wanna take this mute off, okay? But that's pretty much it. That's all we got to do. So you can go through those steps for each one of these pads. Um, at the end, like the wave file, I think it's the ninth one. I always like to put the loop, the repeating loop right here on this pad. You know, that's just something cool to have in the event. You have like all of these. Um, if you remember from the kit earlier on XO, it's eight samples plus one loop obviously on here you have much more than that available to you so you might as well put the loop on here somewhere just to have for future use okay i hope you found this video helpful if you did please consider clicking the like button and subscribing to my channel